Hi, this is Zach Mir with the weekend edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe. It is Sunday, the 28th of April, starting off with the FTSE 100, which is making decent progress towards our price channel top target, 83.30. We're looking for that uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, um, ideally obviously by the end of next month. On the downside, uh, recent uh, support there around 80.20. And then below that, the worst case scenario would be a retest of 79.80. There was a rug pull, but uh, at the moment, it looks as though we could stay on the right side of 8,000, even on retracements. If you're a fan of the market and looking for the bigger target here, it's 8,500 by the end of June, which is the top of that rising trend channel from 2007. So let's see if the market can step up to the plate for once. Moving on to the DAX, and uh, here... We seem to be uh, ready now to re retest the best levels of the turn of the month. That was around 18,500. So we're looking for that over the next couple of weeks while we remain above the floor of the rising October trend channel and the 50-day line at 17,800. Um, in terms of the Dow, uh, we're looking at a situation where uh, we've bounced off the floor of that wider October trend channel there. The uh, support line there normally around uh, 38,000. Basically, we're stay on the right side of that uh, big number. Initial target here up to 38,800, which is the 50-day moving average. If we're going to head for 40,000, I presume, it would be well, to, well towards the end of next month at the earliest. Moving on to Bitcoin, where um, I suppose it's a consolidation that we've been seeing of late. Uh, between 60,000 and uh, the 50-day line around 67,400. Probably better now just to wait for this market to make up its mind within that range. In terms of the downside, the worst we're looking for is 57 or 58,000, basically splitting the difference between the uh, initial February resistance around uh, 53,000 and that 60,000 support zone. On to gold, and uh, here... The hopes are high that uh, we will be able to uh, remain within the current bounds of that channel. It was obviously rather thinner before. The floor of the channel there currently around uh, 2320. Above that, we're looking for obviously a retest of the best levels around uh, 2440. Uh, maybe by the end of next month, if everything goes well, it's up to around the uh, 2540, 2550 area. But uh, that already feels a little bit on the optimistic side. Moving on to the stocks and starting off with the uh, the big story of the week, uh, Anglo-American. What's interesting here is that uh, the market, or the stock rather, has uh, basically closed very near to our uh, target there, 26.50. What we're looking for is an end-of-day close above 26.50 to maybe take us up to uh, £31, which is a, uh, a target derived from a resistance line projection from early last year. I suppose the point to note here is that uh, if... Uh, BHP gets uh, this company anything less than uh, 40 quid, it would probably have been classed to have got a, a bargain given the way that the shares have been so depressed. Really, they should be much nearer to 40 pounds with or without a takeover. Moving on to a rather smaller company, uh, Aptima, and uh, here you can see that uh, the shares have uh, continued to make progress after that bear trap uh, gap reversal. So uh, lower lows for April versus February and then uh, gapping higher. Consolidated well with only one red candle last week. Initial target here around a penny and uh, at the top of that triangle from February and then the second place up to as high as one and a quarter pence by the end of next month as a best case scenario target. Ideally, we stay now on the right side of 0.8 pence. Moving on to a stock which is a bit of a wild card in terms of a tip for the uh, top. If we, have, if we ever actually have any of those, here we've got Basici and uh, here... Uh, bear trap gap reversal from below the late March support. They're around 82 pence, above 82 pence, looking for the 200-day line, £1.12 by the end of next month. If you're a fan of the shares and looking for the ultimate glory, then it would be £1.80 maybe by the end of June, but uh, very early days yet, and uh, I suppose it may be unfair to judge. Uh, this is a big turnaround on the basis of one big day at the end of the week. Uh, the other point, though, which is a positive, is the bullish divergence, so ahead of the gap higher. On Friday, the, the RSI was already suggesting there could be a turnaround on the cards. Speaking of turnarounds, uh, Carclo managed to uh, d 
deliver the goods after a long time in the wilderness. Obviously, probably better not to look at the left-hand side of that chart. But we did gap through the 200-day line at um, 10.3 pence and above that. Got the top of that broadening triangle from the early part of last year at 17 pence for people lucky enough to be in the stock in the right place. So, uh, funding circles, the stock which uh, was always feeding would turn around in the end. There was a chance, I suppose, it would turn around in November, but that came to nothing. Uh, but uh, March has turned around rather better, and uh, we had our uh, initial target there, 43 pence, second target, 52, and uh, third target now is up to 71 or 72 pence, hopefully, during the course of the new week. Ideally, we stay on the right side of that gap at 61 pence in the meantime. Moving on to Genflow, which uh, I interviewed a few weeks ago. Here, uh, the shares uh, seem to have broken that resistance line there from June, the red one, and uh, all that's left now is to crack uh, the April resistance, one and three quarter pence above that. Looking for up to uh, two and a half pence as soon as the end of next month. The reason for the relative optimism is the way that that 50 day line is now rising, and we've had to, or we've been able to consolidate above that over the last couple of weeks and a bit more than that so uh, sideways shuffle signal there for from genflow moving on to hummingbird where uh, there hasn't been any uh, negative news and hence the shares recovering well uh, even though gold price actually i suppose is relatively flat or has been this week here we've had a nice close um, just above the 50-day line around 8.1 pence and looking for the shares to retest march resistance 11 and a half pence well before the end of next month. The key here, I suppose, is for the shares to give us an end of day close above the top of that December gap. 12.4 pence and then we might finally be on our way. On to Mars, which I mentioned in uh, this week's week in small caps. Uh, here we had a gap higher above the 50 day moving average. It looks quite serious this turnaround. So hopefully the shares will have enough gas in the tank to head up to the one pence area which is the uh, top of that December gap, and also would take out the 200-day line and the top of that falling trend channel at uh, three-quarters of a penny, obviously the initial target there, three-quarters of a penny, given that that is also the bottom of the December gap. Moving along to uh, Mosman, which um, has been giving uh, brighter signals of late, uh, taking a long time to go uh, higher though, but we've got a rising 50-day line. We're very na now very near to the 200-day uh, moving average, 019. We're looking for 031, hopefully here by the end of next month, at the top of that rising trend channel base from the end of uh, September last year. But it looks as though those long of the stock now, especially after the gap higher on Friday, are in the right place. On to a rather bigger company, uh, celebrating the FTSE's uh, record highs. We've got uh, Marks & Spencer, which um, gapped up, but we've had a bear trap island reversal. So gapping down at the beginning of the uh, month and then uh, gapping up at the uh, towards the end of uh, April, rising 50-day line as well. So we're expecting that resistance line there from January to be broken around uh, the £2.63 level. End of day close above that, and we could be heading up to as high as three pounds ten pence by the end of next month. Obviously, it's quite a punchy call, but uh, it's quite a punchy setup there as well for marks. On to another blue chip, uh, and uh, here that West Group. You can see that uh, we've been in a uh, rising trend channel here, a steep one uh, for quite some time. In fact, we've hit the top of the initial channel there around uh, three pounds four pence. Above that, there could be a new leg up to the upper parallel of that rising trend channel, and that's currently pointing as high as £3.50 again. That could be a target for next, the end of next month. So uh, let's see if uh, NWG can deliver. Oracle Power, I interviewed during the week, and they had good news as well. Here, um, I suppose we've got a Mosman type turnaround. Uh, here, the shares gapped up earlier in the month. It's been a uh, gap fill rebound. We've got a rising 50-day line as well. So above the 50-day uh, line there, around uh, 0 0.026, we're looking for the top of that broadening triangle from back in November as high as 0 0.044 by the end of next month or even sooner. But the setup there uh, really relying on the shares remaining above, at or above the 50-day moving average. Stock that I rarely look at uh, is next. And uh, here... We've got uh, 
Petra diamonds. And uh, what you can see here is that um, we seem to have a nice turnaround, a rising trend channel base. Uh, we found consolidation at and above the 50-day uh, line and the floor of the channel. And uh, that means that we're looking for up to 60 pence by the end of next month at the top of that rising trend channel from back in November. Ideally, we stay obviously on the right side of 40 pence in the meantime. Finishing off with a stock which actually had and has and still has rather similar setup to Petra. Here we've got uh, Phoenix Copper, where obviously, well, I may be the only one who's waiting for big funding news, but uh, maybe one or two others as well. Here we've had that uh, sideways shuffle along a rising 50 day line. The shares breaking out. The initial target here was 13 and a half pence, and we're looking now for up to 19 pence by the end of next month off uh, at the top of that rising trend channel from back in January. The other sizzle here, if you can describe that, is the way that uh, we've closed above that old gap there from back in January. That was around 13 and a half pence. So we've done that on multiple days. That suggests that uh, we don't want to see an end of day close back below that level. But really, the longer we stay above the 50 day line at 12 pence, the better it is for Phoenix Copper. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.